All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 193, Apparitions, Ghosts, Hobgoblins, and Haunted Houses. The, the title's a little bit long. I just shortened it to Apparitions and put the rest in as the subtitle, you know, for, for spacing requirements. Uh, very interesting work, full length, about 180 pages, I believe. Now, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon, second and third links to my books blogs. You can find other folkloric works in there. This is a, the reason why I decided to edit this, this is written from a uh, skeptic's perspective. That is, the person who wrote it, and, and they put this in the, the introduction, they're like, hey, these are hoaxes and, and bugbears and superstitions and stuff. Yes, and, and they do the Christian thing where they say, yes, there are spirits and stuff, but most sightings are misidentifications. And it's kind of true. You can accept a phenomena and not believe any anecdote about it. Like, I believe in extraterrestrials. But do I believe everyone's stories about seeing flying saucers? Nine times out of ten, it's a hoax. Uh, or a misidentification. The rest of the time, it doesn't necessarily even mean that it's extraterrestrial. It could be a test craft from Roswell or some stupid thing like that. And so these stories are intriguing, but for the occultist, it's partially cautionary. But part of me likes this for the folklore, and it's entertaining. Some of these stories are hilarious. The other part of me likes it because the occultist needs to understand just because you accept spiritual phenomena, as an occultist will do, doesn't mean that any specific phenomena is necessarily true, even if it seems reasonable and rational. Like some of these works, that like you know, 100 years ago, they're talking about how the atomic structure is, is divine, um, magnets, they're, they've got special powers of healing and stuff, things that have generally, generally been discredited, if not outright disproven over time, certain cryptids. Uh, after a while, you find out, indeed, the cryptid, if you look through the, the folklore and history, you find out that the cryptid people think that they're seeing isn't even based on the original story, like the, like the idea that Samuel D. Champlain sh saw a monster in Lake Champlain. That is not actually the case. He did see monstrous sturgeon, but that's pretty much all. So even if you accept that there's some strange creature or group, more likely of creatures or some phenomena, in the lake, it doesn't mean that any specific sighting of it is necessarily true, especially where people say that they're seeing, like, plesiosaurs and shit. Um, so this is an interesting work, and, and again, some of the stories are highly entertaining. Like, there's one work where a couple of pranksters, they use phosphor to write, like, witchy messages on the bed sheets of a couple. The couple goes in, turns their light off, and they're hiding, like, in the corner. They turn their light off, the message appears, they scream, and they run out. Then they scrape it off really quick so that by the time other people come in to see what the hubbub is about, the message is gone and they're like, hey, you know, what are you talking about? You were just dreaming or something. And so they think they're crazy. Uh, and, and so you've got some of these hoaxes and stuff, and they are quite funny. As far as folklore goes, though, this is quite an old work. And these, these stories, of course, predate it by some time. Now, some of them is the author recollecting things they've heard or witnessed themselves, but some of them are older stories that they've simply heard told. Some of them date back several centuries prior. So it's definitely a good compilation of folklore, and it's definitely competently uh, arranged. Some of these stories are longer than others. Some of them are like half a page little ditties that are just sort of cautionary, and then there are some that are longer. Some of it is poetry, uh, which I actually enjoy as well, of a, of a spiritual nature. The last one, it closes with a fairly long poem. So definitely recommend it if you're into folklore, and also for you who practice the occult. Read it from that skeptic perspective and understand sometimes the phenomena you think you're witnessing aren't actually what you think they are. Like, the spirit isn't actually a spirit, it's, it's a hallucination. It's a misidentified individual. It's, it's a, a waking dream or something like that. It is possible for that to happen. Even if you accept the phenomena of spirits existing, you can still admit that not every sighting is a spirit. It's like, well, you know, you believe in Bigfoot. Well, that doesn't mean that every Bigfoot sighting is Bigfoot. It could be a bear. It could be a person in a gorilla costume. It could be the person is literally just telling tall tales to get attention. It could be a hoax. And so you've got to understand that if you're going to practice in any spiritual way. Again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links to my books, blogs. Highly recommended work. That's about all. Peace out.